Could your bad bacteria levels be making you fat? Yep. You can eat fermented foods every day, all day, and take all the probiotic supplements you want. But if you aren't also feeding those intestinal bacteria what they want, you could be throwing your money away. That's because to thrive and multiply, healthy gut bacteria need to eat. And what your gut bacteria likes best is fiber. Recently published research done at the University of Oviedo, or Oviedo, anyway, in Spain, found that obese people with low levels of a group of intestinal bacterial, which I can't really pronounce, so we'll skip it, also had a lower fruit intake. Not too surprising. Fruit is a good source of pectin, which is metabolized in the colon by bacteria, such as bacterio, bacterio, bacteroids. <laughs> anyway, these, this produces short chain or small chain fatty acids, SCFAs. These are known to keep the immune system in check and turn down inflammation, known to be implicated in obesity, among a long list of other issues inflammation contributes to. So the researchers concluded in the journal Nutrients, these results could be useful for designing strategies targeted to obesity prevention. Hmm, pretty cool. Researchers have yet to agree on a precise definition of prebiotics, the substances that intestinal bacteria feed on, but generally the scientists agree that these are undigested dietary carbohydrates that are fermented by colonic bacteria yielding short-chain fatty acids. Say what? So basically it goes like this. The bacteria digest what we aren't able to digest and the short-chain fatty acids, SCFAs, are their waste products. Different prebiotics may nourish different types of bacteria, and researchers have not yet pinned down the specifics of exactly what prebiotics nourish which bacteria. But you can't go wrong covering your bases by eating a wide variety of fruits and vegetables. The key word being wide, variety. A high fiber diet has often been recommended for people who need to lose weight. But now we know the point of eating more fiber is not only to make you feel full or satiated, but also because of its integral role in sustaining healthy diversity of gut bacteria. Meanwhile, the opposite, an unhealthy microbiome, is being increasingly associated with inflammation and obesity. In addition to a diet of ample and diverse produce that is rich in prebiotic fiber, you can also support your microbiota with probiotics. Probiotics work best when you're already fostering your gut environment with healthy prebiotic fiber. Another common prebiotic that can be used is FOS, fructo oligosaccharide. So look for good quality probiotics. Look for ones that will survive the acidic environment of the gastric in, or the GI tract, or particularly the stomach. Many different strains exist, and researchers are increasingly finding different strains support different aspects of health. Research which, may, which ones may be best for you and switch them up occasionally. Don't stay on the same probiotic for months at a time without switching it. My recommendation is anywhere from four to six months, depending on the person, sometimes every one to two months. There's no hard and fast rules here. Fermented foods such as kimchi, sauerkraut, kefir, and kombucha contain live microbes that can help improve the health of your gut bacteria. Make sure you get truly live products and not pasteurized. They will usually be in the refrigerated section of the, so of the store. But again, there are shelf-stable pH balance ones that can survive the gastric um, stomach environment and get through and do some good. Side note, if you have dysbiosis, unbalanced bacteria levels, or SIBO, also known as small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, or some other digestive issue, I highly recommend you do not willy-nilly take a bunch of prebiotics and or probiotics. You can actually make things worse. See my previous post, called Are Probiotics Doing More Harm Than Good? If you need help or are a little bit confused, give my office a call. I'm Dr. Craig Mortensen. Be healthy, be happy. And check out some of my product recommendations for things that can help you if you're not having a serious issue. Until next time, we'll see ya.